Hi everybody, I'm Rob Jolliffe, and this is an Ask the IT Expert. Today we're going to talk about how much should computer maintenance cost. Let's jump in. All right, so what we want to ask today is how much should computer maintenance cost and um, what, you know, basically per device or per computer or what, what have you. Um, <clears throat> my name is Rob Jolliffe. As I mentioned earlier, I'm the, uh, your expert today. I'm an expert in IT services, particularly in manufacturing businesses and uh, also in the supply chain. Um, my expertise is ERP, IT, network engineering, et cetera. So let's jump in as well. Who's Sabre? So Sabre, we are experts in IT dedicated to the manufacturing sector. So we do ERP services and IT services exclusively for manufacturing companies anywhere in North America. If you're interested in what we're talking about today and you'd like to book a meeting with me, please don't hesitate. I have a link down below in the description where I have uh, put my, my calendar. You can book a 30 minute meeting with me. And if you could just give me a little bit of an idea of what you wanna talk about, that would allow me to prepare. And it'll be locked into my calendar and I can answer any of your questions about this or any other video. Okay, so today's subject is how much should computer maintenance of a computer system cost? Um, <clears throat> how much should it cost? So let's let's take a look at what the sort of the market prices are if you were to outsource computer maintenance, and then we'll compare it to an inside staff member if you were to hire for computer maintenance. And I'll give you a few of the uh, troubles that you could run into hiring and and running it internally for smaller businesses. So um, it's it's pretty consistent across any jurisdiction, whether you're in Canada, the United States, Great Britain, um, the price per computer in the local currency tends to run between 100 and 150, whether that's in pounds or it's in dollars or Canadian dollars, it's gonna be about in that price range. So um, in that range, you're getting typically all of the services you need, cybersecurity, help desk, you're getting preventive maintenance and, and proactive maintenance, and you're also getting a, a degree of, of consulting services, sometimes called VCIO. If you do, an, let's do an IT thought experiment. Now let's imagine we're gonna hire internally and what would we price it at? And we're gonna start with a company that just has servers and desktops and laptops, nothing too complicated, not a lot of projects to do. It's a very stable environment. So maybe every few years there's a project, but typically we don't need that. We just need the maintenance. Um, and we'll, we'll, we'll assume there's 55 total devices between servers and desktops, a 10 to one ratio between servers and desktops or laptops, it could be laptops. You need three sets of skills on an IT team. There's three sets of, of skills that your typical IT person um, or people need to have. You need an entry level team uh, that provide desktop support. You need an intermediate team that are providing proactive maintenance and, and, and preventive maintenance. And you need a, an engineering team of very, very top level people. Sometimes they're, they're dealing with issues that come from the other two levels and they're the experts who can solve the most complicated problem. And often they're working on the project work. So, um, if we're going to hire for these three roles in our small business, we're going to have some problems, obviously, because it's going to be super expensive to hire three people, can't afford that. And rarely does one person want to do all three of those roles. So why? Why can't I just hire a network engineer and they're $100,000 plus people, but why, why can't I hire a network engineer and they'll do everything else? Well, let's put it in, in context of like an accounting role. So the desktop support is like your entry level AP person or, or junior bookkeeper, intermediate bookkeeper within um, a business. And your network engineer is like your CPA, CFO controller level, very, very uh, experienced. They make a lot of money. Um, they've, they did that job years and years ago, but they've graduated way beyond it now. And, and they're just not interested in doing the help desk work. So you need to hire that mid-range network administrator because that person is sandwiched between being a help desk person and being a network engineer, network engineer, help desk person. They've, they've grown from the help desk, but they haven't already reached the network engineer. So this opportunity to work as a network admin is a really good opportunity for them. And by the way, what we do find is most of these people do not stick around because once they get that network engineering experience on their resume, 
because they were doing the network engineering within your organization. Now they can move beyond just being a network admin and they can get into the job they really want to do. But let's just assume you do find somebody and they're pretty good. They're not great, but they're good. And they're, they don't have this aspiration to leave. You're, you're lucky you found somebody who's going to stay. And, and today, in today's market, you're looking at least $75,000 a year for that person. So if we took that $75,000 a year person and we said, how much would they cost per desktop? Because we, we've already got the price of what the managed service providers charge per desktop. We'll add about a 20% overhead and we'll get to a $90,000 a year amortized rate. We'll take that and divide our 55 computers into it. And we get, lo and behold, $136 an hour, which is right in line with what we were being quoted if we went and looked at a managed service provider. And it's very logical why those prices are very similar. So the network admin, by the way, can't do network engineering properly. You, so they either really want to learn and get that experience, like I said, so they can put it on their resume, in which case they fool around with it and try it and often don't do it right. Or they decide, you know, I really don't know what I'm doing. I'm going to hire in somebody out from the outside. So you do, even with that full-time person, typically have a percentage of time where you're hiring outside people and bringing them in for their expertise. So let's round up the $136 per computer per, per month to about $150 per computer per month. So we're at the top range of what the managed service providers uh, do. So here's kind of my caveat, my warning to a small business that is looking at doing this. If you have 55 computers and you're considering, you know what, I would like to hire this person, what can I do? Um, I want to just give you a couple of warnings. First of all, they probably, if you hire a good enough person who's senior, it's very likely that they're not going to want to do the help desk. And if you hire a mid-level person who's not comfortable with the preventive maintenance and the servers, they won't want to do that. They'll want to always do the help desk. So they're always going to kind of attend. You're either going to get the perfect Goldilocks person, which maybe one out of 50 is that, or you're going to get somebody who tends to one or the other uh, and leaves the preventive maintenance and the opposite uh, behind. So over time, what's going to happen is they're going to ask for some help. They're going to say, hey, I can't keep up. I'm, you know, I'm running behind. You know, I can't get this stuff done. Can you hire somebody to help me? And we've seen the worst case of this that we've seen was a business that literally had about 55 computers. They ended up with three full time IT people. They ended up with a help desk person a network had been and a network a senior network engineer and they were paying over four hundred dollars amortized per computer per month for these three three full-time people and one of the main reasons that we see this that the company decides i need to have these on-site people is is almost always because they feel like they have to have the responsiveness of somebody being able to walk up and change the toner in the printer because the rest of the staff are just incapable of doing that. Or they need somebody to be able to walk up and say, I see the error message on your screen. I'm going to go back to my desk and try and fix it for you right now. And it's about that responsiveness and instantaneous answer to questions. That's the value that the company feels that they're getting uh, from having that IT person there. So in general, um, you know, if you're if you're if you're sourcing in the market and you're looking for IT services, the price of about a hundred and hundred to hundred and fifty bucks, which would would rant round to about one hundred and twenty five, that's kind of your market price. But that's also roughly the price of hiring somebody internally to do the job if you're amortizing it over time. The the challenge you have when you're hiring internally with the small business that size, like it's very different when you have five hundred computers. Then you can hire an IT manager and three or four um, staff to work for them and get that price down because you're amortizing over a lot more computers. But when you're when you're in that 55 kind of sweet pain spot, if you will, then you've hired an IT person, you're paying about the same, but you don't know if they're good or bad when you hire them. So you're taking your chances. You don't know how long they're going to stay. They get distracted by what they prefer to do and they end up actually kind of pushing you to hire more people and you end up uh, getting into these kind of um, ridiculous priced uh, per computer when you when you amortize it into the, all of the computers in the company. I hope you uh, you liked this video. I hope it was uh, it was helpful. And uh, if you're interested in more videos like this, please don't hesitate to subscribe. It's always great when you like the videos. It tells the YouTube algorithm to promote us. 
Uh, if you'd like to reach out and contact me other than using the um, uh, book an appointment in the link, you can email me at info at saberlimited.com. That comes to myself and some other people who can answer you if I'm not available. And you can also visit us at www.saberlimited.com to read some of our blogs and uh, learn more about the business. Thanks very much and have a great day.